Hey, it's Carlos. Welcome back for another double dose. That's right, twice in a week, I keep this stuff up. I'm gonna give you another dose of dating and relationship advice. Today, I wanna to talk about how to stop him from stringing you along. I'm gonna give you three tips to keep him from wasting your time. Because the world is full of time wasters. They clog up our lives like hair at the bottom of the drain. That's kind of gross, actually. Especially if it's a guy that's stringing you along, wasting your love and your time on a relationship that's just not fulfilling you and it's not leading anywhere. You gotta know how to stop these guys from plugging up your life. It's time to get some Drano for the dudes because you need to know whether to give him more time or just kick him to the curb. Now I'm gonna warn you that if you're prone to needing to blame the guy for all the problems or if you shy away from the tough talk, this article is going to not gonna kiss your butt, all right? I'm here to give you the straight dope on how to really be happy in your relationship, not deluded happy. We have enough of that going around. So put on your big girl shoes and let's dig into some ways to avoid getting strung along and played by the man in your life. I know, I'm gonna get endless comments about telling you to put on your big girl shoes. But anyway, most guys are simply not stringing you along on purpose, okay? We're doing what you're doing, which is trying to find somebody to love. We just have different strategies. It's up to you, though, to watch out for yourself. So these tips, they'll help you out. They'll keep you safe. So stop getting strung along. Tip number one is make a reality check. Ask yourself the critical question. Are you really being strung along? What makes you feel that way? Is it that he's, uh, well, he isn't acting the same way as when you first got together with him? Because I'll have to stop you right there and tell you, wake up and grow up, honey. No one acts the same later as they did at the start. Yeah, even you. The best way to check in on this is to really check your gut as I ask you this next question. You ready? Do you feel that there's anything actually wrong with your connection? And is there a possibility that this is a common feeling you get at this point in all of your relationships? In other words, however many months you're in or weeks you're in with this guy, you almost always feel the same way. Is it maybe the same every time? Back when I was still pretty amateurish about dating, a friend of mine interrupted me to tell me something that I have never forgotten. She said to me, what's the one thing that is in common to all of your problems? And I sat there and I thought about that for a while and without waiting for my answer, she just said it to me. She said, you, you are the one thing that is always there in all of your problems. And that's when it really clicked for me, that it wasn't every one of my partners that was wrong or bad, and it wasn't me either. I was just the common element to all of them. I was the hub, the center of all my problems. And if I wanted them to change, I had to change me, not them. So really take a few minutes and think about that one. Make sure you have hard data that says, Yep, he's definitely putting me on the back burner. Stop getting strung along. Tip number two, check your stuff. You ready for another serious question? Yep, I got a lot of these. Ask yourself this one. Do you tend to make snap decisions when your insecurities rise up? Or do you have a healthy level of self-awareness? Don't be too quick to assume the latter. You'd be surprised how many women rush to conclusions when she gets a bit rattled in her relationship. Also ask yourself, do you settle up front for less than you know that you'll want later on? I know a lot of women that will date hard for about a month or two, then she'll get really frustrated and angry. And after a couple weeks of angry dating, she'll get sad and lonely. And this is kind of the phase they go through. You can practically hear her standards starting to drop as this frustration sets in. And eventually she just takes some guy who is good enough. He's usually not a strong-willed man and his lack of masculine edge has already doomed the relationship before it gets started. And then what happens is that she's unhappy, dissatisfied, and generally underwhelmed. She might try a little salvage operation where she tries to fix or change him. Note, never works. And then when it doesn't work, she turns on the complaint engine instead of dropping him and just moving on. You see, there simply aren't enough compatible guys for you to constantly be in a good relationship. Guys kind of accept this, but on a lot of levels, a lot of women don't. And when they realize that they're not connecting with a the guy, they start to turn the blame machine on. Yeah, guys do it too, but let's face it, it's a little bit different for women. So you're gonna have gaps and pauses in the action, okay? It's part of the dating game, get used to it. If you can't deal with a bit of alone time, you might wanna get a cat. Uh, if you already have a cat, don't get more than two. Just get one of those pocket dogs that you can throw in your purse. Now ask yourself this one. Are you more attracted to men who are a little out of reach, a little hard to get? This is very common where the man you typically want is only the unavailable kind. He's in a relationship already, or he's emotionally unavailable, or he's in a long distance relationship. All right, stop getting strung along. Tip number three, your priorities are not the same. 
men's and women's priorities are often not in sync at the same time. While they are in the same relationship, we each have things we want most and they don't always match our partners. It's one of the things that the Cosmo articles never tell you about. Now, as a general rule, men are more likely to keep their girlfriend in separate compartments from the rest of their life. He'll pull you closer when he has a need for intimacy and companionship that rises up in his awareness. Women, on the other hand, are more likely to immediately make her man the center of her life, and she'll feel unhappy and diminished if that all or nothing attitude is not reciprocal from him back to her. You see, there's nothing wrong with a man not being into seriously dating. There's nothing wrong with a woman not being into casual dating. The problem comes up when we expect those roles all the time from men and women. The fact is that there are a lot of guys looking to date seriously. The reason he tells you he's casual is usually because he can sense that it's not a match for him and he wants to avoid you getting too attached to him. That's what a man usually means when he says that. Women often avoid the label of not dating seriously because it sounds kind of well, slutty. Yeah, even in the new millennium, we still have that double standard for men and women in dating. And that standard is there for a reason and very scientific reason, by the way. I'm gonna cover that another time. So make sure right up front that a man is able to make you a priority in his life. If he isn't, it's a good sign that you're being strung along for sex. Or B, he's serious about a relationship. You can usually figure that one out just by looking at his dating history, which is why it's so important for you to ask good questions about his dating background when you get into a relationship with a guy. Someone once said, if you wanna know if you're being strung along or not, let go of the string. You'll find out because he won't come back to pick up the slack. If he does come back to you, he might be skittish or truly scared of being hurt, but either way, you gotta be watching him closely for those first three to six months of dating so you can know exactly what he's doing and where he's coming from, which means you should also be very careful not to fall too far too fast. This is Carlos's rule for all women out there. Slow yourself down, take your time. Finding a good man and making him commit does not require you to fall hard for him. I know that sounds crazy, but the more you can drive cautiously for those first few months, the more he's going to work to win you. Now, if you want to know more about how to get a guy to commit, go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash commitment, where I have a great presentation, a real short presentation on how to engage a guy using the Cupid effect. And as always, make sure you do the big three on every one of my videos. Of course, make sure you like it. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. And number three, make sure you turn on notifications so you know when these come out. I may throw up an extra from time to time and you'll want to know when they go up. Again, go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash commitment, open up a new tab. YouTube hates it when you leave. And do that now and I'll be talking again soon. This is Carlos Cavallo from datingadviceguru.com. Live and love with passion.